you want to continue with um, what you were saying about how you hate your mom? Hey, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is not no, fair. No, before I, not... I hit the record button, you were talking about how your mom is so unsupportive of you. <laughs> she doesn't care. She's like, oh, my gosh, they're charging $3. How could they charge that much? <laughs> I did not. I was just telling you, sir, about the dilemma she's having. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to pay $3. Much. Like, she it's crazy. She doesn't want to support us too much, but she wants to support us not too little either. She's trying to like, find that happy medium. I'll give her the $3 if she needs it. <laughs> like, I, I do not hate my mother, and my mother <laughs> is very supportive of us. She's listened to every episode. Shout out to my mom, even though she's not a subscriber to Patreon. Patreon. Uh, no, it, mom, Connor's a big liar. Is that a fat joke, man? That, I, that's why I didn't say fat, Connor. Uh, I said big uh, liar. A uh, big fat liar. You read into it. You read into it. I was just being, I was Jokes trying to be. you, Matt. I don't know how to read. <laughs> Welcome to the Garlic Boys podcast, where we treat friendship like a good recipe treats garlic. You can never have too much of it. Uh, we're your hosts. I'm Connor O'Connor. And I'm Percy Jackson, the lightning thief. That's me. <laughs> That's not the name that you said you were going to go with. <laughs> I know. I wanted to keep you on your toes. <laughs> the last few weeks, Matt's like, I don't know what name I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. And I've been giving him the names because I'm funnier than Matt is. Okay. And then this week, he was like, I don't, I don't remember last week's episode because I don't care enough to listen. Hey. hey. Um, <laughs> Or listen, I care enough to listen. I care. Oh, it's I just your mom that doesn't care enough to listen. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, uh, that's true. Your mom's gonna hit me when I see her next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm it's... probably gonna hit you when I see you next. <laughs> I can't, I can't take any of this out now. It's so ingrained into the energy of the episode. It is. Uh, it, you... I don't Sorry, not me. Uh, the team of 13 editors that we have. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. that we have so much money to pay all right. of them. I mean, we they, could we could pay editors. We could. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, kick in the pantalones. Patreon.com slash the garlic boys. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Oh. <laughs> what a great start. <laughs> I lost, I lost my train of thought completely. So I'm just going to ask you how your week was. Uh, my, my week was good. It was yeah. really good. I had I had a good time. Uh, I went and yeah, I'm going to brag a little bit. I went to my girlfriend's for Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> met a whole bunch of her family and they were the sweetest, most amazing people. They were so much fun. Um, we were, played a bunch of games and ate a bunch of food, you know, as one does. Um, nice. And also... Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet came out, and I have been playing it almost nonstop. <laughs> I have loved every second of it, aside from the glitching. But I'm even starting to love the glitching. <laughs> I, I don't think it's that bad. It's not. It hasn't been too bad for me. There's been a few times where the game has crashed, and that was really disappointing. But like, I, I haven't, I haven't really noticed anything where like I'm like, oh, this game is unplayable. Like Cyberpunk. I think Cyberpunk was like virtually unplayable um when it first came out because it was just so full of bugs because you know people rush the developers and stuff like that so i've been enjoying it speaking of pokemon do you know what those are originally called matt i feel like i do i've heard this before um but i am 100 percent blanking on it well i'll tell you Pokemon originally were called pocket monsters. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how you gonna... get the um, portmanteau. I learned that word, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I can't read, but I hear big words. Um, portmanteau of Pokemon is from pocket monsters. And so for this week's Clever Boy Quit. Oh, we're going to do portmanteau. Clever Boy <laughs> Clever boy quiz. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much what Pokemon is. All right. And you're going to have to tell me 
some monster geography. Mo okay. Woo. Woo Yay. Yay. Oh, also, um, I tried to get uh, some applause, uh, some effects. Uh, it cost five dollars. I wasn't doing that. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> so uh, just in your head, imagine uh, applause. Well, that's why uh, we. That's why I gave a little woo. Yay! Clap, clap, clap. Uh, if I remember correctly, Matt, you lost last week, right? That sounds correct. I would so be you're surprised. Still, you're still only a triple clever winner. Oh yeah, it was the Oreo. Oreo one. It was yes. freaking Lady Gaga got me stumped. Is Lady Gaga now your arch nemesis? Yes, absolutely. I will fight her and her meat dress. Well, luckily you'll have some meat to put on the black eye that she gives you because oh, got him. Everything is not Gucci in that house. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Please move on to. The I don't know what that means at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, today's uh, today's topic is monster geography. Okay. I'm going to give you the name of a cryptid. Oh, for okay. A monster. Yeah, and you're gonna have to tell me where in the world it's from. Uh, okay. Do I do I have to like? Is it continents or I need specific countries? So, well, some of them are countries. Some of them are states. I don't know. The more the specific you can be with the creature, the more points you will get. Okay. So, continent is one point. Okay. Country will be two points. And if you can tell me like a town or state or like region within that country, um, like Mothman, for example, which is in on this quiz, we know comes from West Virginia. Right. If you had if you could tell me like the West Virginia for these creatures, if there is one available, I will tell you. Um, do, do I get extra extra points if i say specifically point pleasant west virginia no dang it the most points you can get is either going to be two or three because okay. some of them didn't have like specific towns just specific countries so do you do you have like a tally of all the points i can get like the total so we know if i win or not no <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we're gonna we're gonna cut to me knowing it. Okay, <laughs> we'll make it based on a feeling. <laughs> okay, so I've done the math. Uh, from what I've read and what I've gone over, there are at least 24 points on offer here. Matt, okay, you have to score 18. 18. Oh, okay. So as long as you score two That's... thirds. That's a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay. All right. Are you, are you feeling prepared? No, not even slightly. Well, that's the reason why you have to be a clever boy. <laughs> we really have to get a better studio audience than this because no one said it with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Let's let's redo it. Okay, that's why you have to be a clever oh, boy. boy. You really suck at saying things at the same time as me. I said it at the exact same time that you I heard did it in, not. My, in my headphones. I did it. I did. <laughs> All right, cryptid number one: the barghest. The what? The barghest. Is that one word or? Yes. And I will spell these for you because right. as we know, I don't understand how letters work together. <laughs> okay. B-A-R-G-H-E-S-T. Or it could be spelled B-A-R-G-U-S-T. G-U-E-S-T. So bar guest. Oh my gosh. Um. Sounds it sounds very English, but like I'm also it there's the G H spelling, which kinda mm, I'm gonna go with Europe because I don't I could not tell you what country it's in. You're going for Europe for one point? For one yeah, one point Europe. <laughs> 
All right, Matt, that is one point. It is Europe? It is Europe. Can More I, specifically... Before, hold on, before you give me the answer, if I get... So, so if I get the lesser one right, would I then be able to, before you give me the answer, kind of like the Bones quiz, give you like a more specific answer, a guess, if you will, to get more points? I'll allow it. Okay, all right. Oh, crap. <laughs> now I have to guess which country it is. All right, my guess is Germany. Sorry, Matt, that's incorrect. Uh, so we're gonna say you can keep guessing smaller and smaller if it's available, but once you once you lose, that's it. That's so fair. that's one right. point for your first question. The bar guest is from Northern Ireland. North, okay, all right. In Northern Irish folk folklore, the bar guest or bargest is a mythical monstrous black dog with large teeth and claws. Though in other cases, the name can refer to a ghost or household elf. Especially in North 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 Lumber Northumberland or mm -hmm. Dur uh, Durham, such as the Claude of Lad of the Claude Lad of Halton. All right. Uh, I apologize to all of my ancestors <laughs> for messing and all up of, all of and them. all of mine. Don't forget mine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, Matt. That is one point. All right, I'll take it. Number two. The British Big Cats. I I hate you because <laughs> I know I know deep in my heart, I know so deep in my heart that this is probably a trick question because it, it wouldn't be in the name. Matt, you can't just call every question you don't know the answer to a trick question. Connor, you're full of trick questions. Every question you do is a trick question. It's almost as like if you could get the trick questions, that makes you a clever a boy. A clever boy, but like I would have to have some knowledge. Okay, that's I do have some these, knowledge of these last few quizzes have been things that you could have knowledge on. Uh, I know you're not a bone expert, but you're telling me you've never heard of the British big cats. No, I've never heard of the British big cats. I don't I don't want to get it wrong. I'm <laughs> I really don't want to get it wrong. Um but like I if I don't know, I, I have like a continents, one in seven chance of getting it correct. Um and if I'm not correct on saying the continent, then oh my gosh, I hate you. All right, Europe. Are you sure that's your final answer? I mean, yeah. it's not like Britain's been anywhere else in this world, right? I know. I know Britain's been just about everywhere else. But against my better judgment, I'm going to call your reverse psychology and guess Europe. Matt, that is correct for one point. Yeah! <laughs> Would you like to give a guess to the country? All right, I got the, I got the, um, uh, are, are we saying that all of UK is, I'm not, this is not my answer, but are we saying for the sake of this, all of UK is one? I'm going to accept pretty much any term for that country. Okay. Because it is convoluted. Um, and I will tell you two is the maximum on this question. Um, it doesn't get more specific than that. All right. Um, I know I've already got one point, but like, if I keep riding on just one point, then I probably won't win. Considering there's only 10 questions, you're definitely not going to win. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I'm struggling a bit, but like, I don't know. I'm I, I I'm just gonna go with the UK. Final answer. I guess. In British folklore, British big cats, also referred to as ABCs, aliens, and the Molois, big cats, phantom cats, and mystery cats, 
featuring reported sightings of large fields feral in the British Islands. Many of these, sorry, large felids, F-E-L-I-D-S, mm -hmm. in feral in the British Isles. Many of these creatures have been described as panthers, pumas, or black cats. So I was right. Yes, that's a sec that's a that's a bonus point for you, man. The British B big cats are from Great Britain, also uh, known right. as the United Kingdom. See, I was I was so worried that was going to be like a the British big cats, and it's like Russia or something like that. Like I wouldn't be surprised if I'm being a hundred percent honest. They're they're called the British big cats, even though they were discovered in America. <laughs> All right, Matt. Number three. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'd like to apologize for pronunciation. I can give a spelling if you ask. The Wolpertinger. <laughs> that could also be Wolpertinger, I believe. Depends. I know the, the, the W sound is pronounced differently around the world. Right. So I'm just giving you options. Okay. Um, there are two, two, two thoughts in my head as to where this could be. Um, and I've already guessed Europe twice, but yeah. the, the one, the one that I'm thinking it sounds like just based on the linguistics of it is in Europe. And if I guess Europe again and it's wrong, I'm going to bite myself in the butt because that is going against everything I learned in high school test taking strategies. Um, but I also wouldn't put it past you to be that kind of teacher that does like all of the answers A and then one of them is C. <laughs> I, I know you would do something like that. Oh, Matt, I have done something like that. <laughs> I know, like I was free, but it would, yeah, no, back to the, back to the quiz. Sorry, um, the, the creature you're thinking on, just as a reminder, is the Volpertinger. Yeah, um, ag again, against my better judgment, because I know this is going to be wrong. If I get it wrong on the, oh, no, 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 because you said if I get Once it wrong. Once you get it wrong, you're done guessing. I was going to say, if I get it wrong. Can I guess? But no, that would be cheating. I could just keep guessing. Um, let's go Europe again. Final answer? Uh, yeah. That is correct for another point. Oh, I hate you so much. All right. And what country do you think it's from? I, I don't know exactly which country, but it sounds like either Sweden, Finland, or Norway. Any of those. Is what it sounds like. Also, the way you were pronouncing it also kind of sounds like German. Um, I'm gonna go Norway. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna go Sweden. Sweden. Final answer. Final answer. Sweden. Matt, that is incorrect. Oh, no! it's Norway, isn't it? <laughs> The Wuppeltinger is from Bavaria, Germany. Germany! Oh my gosh! It has a body comprising various animal parts, generally wings, antlers, a tail, and fangs, all attached to the body of a small mammal. Most widespread depictions portrays the Wuppeltinger as having the head of a rabbit, the body of a squirrel, the antlers of a deer, the wings, and occasionally the legs of a pheasant. So, Matt, we are on to creature number four. Okay. Your creature is the Yeren. Can you spell that for me? Y-E-R-E-N. Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Matt, you have to tell me where to find a Yeren. <laughs> um, I... Gosh, I don't know. Um... Again, it's kind of like a couple places come to mind. Um, let's let's break out a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go South America. Final answer. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, Matt. That is incorrect. Dang it. The year in is actually from China. China? Okay. All right. I can see that now. It is a cryptid ape man reported to inhabit remote mountainous regions of China, more famously in the Shangun. I apologize. I, I cannot pronounce this word. Um, I apologize. I'm not even going to try it because I do not want to be disrespectful. Um, but I also believe that it can be found in the Hubei province. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, sightings of hairy men have been remained constant since the Warring States period circa 34, 3040 BCE. Sorry, 340 BCE. Through the Tang Dynasty, which was 6... 18 to 907 CE, was forced solidifying into the modern legend of the Yoren. Generally, they are described as savage, strong, fast moving, living in mountain caves and ascending only to raid villages for food and for people to wed. Boo. All right. Congratulations, China. All right, Matt. You ready for number five? Sure. Your cryptid is the Ogopogo. Oh. The Ogopogo. See, would you, like, would you like the spelling on that one? Now I can guess how it's pronounced or how it's spelled. <laughs> Again, ah, all of these, these could be so many different things. I'm going to go the continent of Africa. This time. Final answer? Based on your face, no. <laughs> yeah, it's my final answer. It's probably South America, isn't Matt, it? Matt, are you sure that's your final answer? <laughs> Connor, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna win. It's <laughs> it's 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 fine. I, I I might as well just 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 guess with my heart, Connor. I'm oh, guessing your, heart, your heart's wrong. Okay, well, that's fine. In Canadian folklore... Canadian? The Ogobogo Canadian? is... Canadian? Is a lake monster said to inhabit the Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Some scholars have charted the, enti the entity's development from First Nations folklore and widespread water monster folklore, folklore motifs. The Ogopogo now plays a part or plays a role in the commercial symbolism and media representation of the region it's canada's loch ness monster my guy okay well i i've never heard of it all right how am i supposed to guess where they're from that's the point of the you keep hitting on the specific point of all of these games connor i understand that but like most quizzes have to when you give a quiz to somebody when you give a quiz to literally anybody it's because they have some sort of knowledge on it nobody goes on jeopardy knowing quite literally nothing i'm sorry do you want to head back to the first episode we did where you said you loved learning about monsters and you know monsters <laughs> so i'm sorry that i assumed I... a worldwide cryptid quiz to, would be to right be up fair. your alley to be no, fair no you don't get to to be fair. We're moving on to the I next will question. to be fair if you I will want not, to. You will not, sir. You will not. Good I know. day, sir. I, I know. said good day. I do not care. I know most of America's America's cryptids. I know. Uh, don't. don't. Where is Canada located? In North America? North America. I know most of the United States of America's Oh, because that's a different location than America. Right. All right, just move on. Let's move on. Number six, Malambo. See, I now I said, now <laughs> I said I know most of America's, and like one of these is going to be America, and I'm going to get it wrong. I should say I know many, many of America's, not most, many. Just to, to clarify for the listeners out there who think I'm just talking out of my butt. Matt, that doesn't answer my question. Africa! Uh, that is correct for one point. Yeah! I can't what tell you country, which country in Africa. What There's country no in Africa? 
you can i will allow you to pull up a map of africa right now all right all right you you look up a map of africa there's so many countries in africa (laughs) come on matt there's only 119 different countries in the world it can't be that hard (laughs) to narrow it down all right what was the name of it again Mam Lambo, M A M L A M B O. Ah, gosh. Um, I could be very, very wrong, but it does sound kind of like, uh, like one of the. It could be like one of the bigger ones, maybe, maybe Madagascar, which is part of Africa, maybe Ethiopia or could Congo. Be. Oh, Probably Congo not. sounds Congo sounds right. Um uh-huh. Zimbabwe. I I know a lot of these, but I don't know where it's from. Take a guess, my guy. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Madagascar. I forgot that was part of Africa, if I'm being 100 percent honest. Final answer? Yeah. Sorry, Matt, that is incorrect. <laughs> In right. 1997, South African newspapers Boo. reported on sightings of a giant reptile monster in the mid... Again, I'm going to abstain from reading this. Uh, I apologize. I just do not want to pronounce it wrong. Um, in a river near Mount Alif in South Africa, villagers in that area claimed that the creature was 20 meters or 67 feet long and had a head of a horse, the lower body of a fish, short legs, and the neck of a snake, and that it shined like bright with a bright, a green light at night. All right, fine. Hey, I I got Africa. I yeah. even if even if I don't get eighteen points, which I think is near impossible at this point. Well, um, you have five, so yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm still, I'm still kind of proud of myself for having some points. We, we're, we're on a good clip here. Um, we'll see. I'm not going to throw you any more core curveballs. It's just me, you know, straight down the, straight down the pitch. Okay. Yeah. Number seven, the Michigan Dog Man. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so terrified that this is a curveball. <laughs> I'm so terrified that I'm going to be like coming in super hot, super confident and just be like, the United States of America, it's in Michigan, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be like, nah, it's in like Washington. Like they're completely off jokes on you, idiot. That's in Africa. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually very possible. It's another Canadian one because they have like Michigan around there, you know, that's kind of connecting and stuff like that. For sure. Could also be Wisconsin. Um, I believe Michigan is a First Nations word, so I could be wrong on that, but I believe it is. I'm just gonna. I've lost already. I don't think there's anything I can do. I'm gonna go Michigan. That's not That's, a continent, Matt. I but I thought I thought I could like just. Oh, you want to just go straight to three points? Yeah. No, I'm I'm going straight. Can you to three can points. you clarify all three points for me then? Okay, the United States of America. Well, North America is the the continent. United States is the country, and Michigan is the state. That is correct. (laughs) Yep. In Michigan folklore, the Michigan Dogman was allegedly witnessed in 1887 in Wexford County, Michigan. The creature described as a seven-foot-tall, blue-eyed, amber-eyed, bipedal canine-like animal with the torso of a man and a fearsome howl that sounds like a human scream. According to legends, the Michigan Dogman appears in a 10-year cycle and falls on years ending in seven. All right. I think this is just somebody saw a dude in the woods that was just tall and hairy or 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 there's a half dog half man (laughs) that's a werewolf this is just a werewolf (laughs) it's basically a werewolf yeah it's just a werewolf 
big old tall werewolf. Yep. All right, Matt. Number eight. Last one wasn't a curveball. Straightforward answer. Uh -huh. You understand straightforward questions, right? You yes. you got this. <laughs> There's nothing I could give you that would be complicated. <laughs> okay. Number seven, the chupacabra. Oh, see, I know this one. This is uh I'll go, I'll go all three again. Um, this is uh North America, Mexico. And I don't know if there's I can't go any deeper than Mexico, I don't think. Final answer. Uh kinda, because I know it yes, final answer. That's only one point. Really? It's north so it's okay. Chubacabras are actually started in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, okay. Um they are their own country. Mm -hmm. Um nope, I'm gonna take that out because that's wrong. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're technically part of the yep, United I States. just remembered that they're part of the United States. <laughs> So if I would have said United States, I would have got it right. But I didn't. Uh, so I, you didn't. I said Mexico. Yes. So the chupacabra uh, is Spanish pronunciation, literally goat sucker, is a yeah. legendary creature in the folklore of parts of America, of the Americas, sorry, with its pur purported sightings reported in Puerto Rico in 1995. The name comes from the animal's reported vampirism, the chupacabra is said to attack and drink the blood of livestock, including goats. Yes, I did did know most of that. I I do do follow the lore on chupacabras a little bit, but didn't know they were Puerto Rican. Yeah, that's why I picked that one um, because I too thought Puerto um, chupacabras from New Mexico, um, specifically because of Scooby Doo and the chupacabra. <laughs> That's where you. That's where you get all your facts. Most most of my monster knowledge comes from Scooby Doo. Uh, <laughs> I mean, why would they steer me wrong? Oh yeah, no, they're they're they're, they're completely factual. Everything exactly. they do is well researched and factual for sure. All right, number nine, the Yowie. The Yowie, is that Y A W I? Uh, y O E. Y O W I E. Oh. Yowie. Or Yowie. Yeah. I feel like I've heard of this one, but I honestly couldn't tell you where it's from. Um, I haven't guessed Asia yet. No, no. Ooh. You know what else I haven't guessed? Australia. You yeah. I haven't. You technically haven't guessed either. Right, right. But. It's now that I think about it, Australia being its own continent, its own country, um, and it kind of sounds like <laughs> it kind of sounds like Australian. Um, that's going to be my guess is Australian. Sorry, I was pouring myself more water. You're fine. Uh, it's not like we're in the middle of a show or anything. It's totally cool. So you're going with the continent of Australia? Y yeah. Okay. Um, that is correct. Yeah, technically, it's also a country, so I get two points. <laughs> well, technically, within the continent of Australia, you have Australia, Oceania, Indonesia, and New Zealand. Really? I don't. I could be wrong about Indi uh, Indonesia, but uh, Oceania and New Zealand are part of Australia, the continent. Huh. Pretty, I'm almost positive. I actually didn't know that. Fascinating. Uh, that, well, then, if I'm getting more specific, I'm just going to say the country, not any of the other stuff, the country of Australia. Final answer? I guess. That is correct. <laughs> All right. The, the Yowie or Yowie, is described as a hairy and ape-like creature standing upwards of between 6'11 and 12 feet. Dang! The Yowie's feet are described as much larger than a human's, but alleged Yowie tracks are inconsistent in shape and number toe. Toe number. 
and the descriptions of the Yahweh's feet and footprints provided by the Yahweh witnesses are even more varied than those of Bigfoot. The mm -hmm. Yahweh's nose is described as flat and wide. So it's it, it's essentially Australia's Bigfoot, Bigfoot's Yeti, or, or Australia's Yeti or something like that. Yeah, kind okay. of. In that same vein, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Matt. This last one, you... Can't win. You can't <laughs> win. But think of it as a personal victory for yourself <laughs> with no actual... <laughs> With no actual victory. victory. It's a participation ribbon is exactly what it's it is. Participation ribbon, yeah. <laughs> Number 10, the rock ape. The rock ape. Yes. <sighs> the rock ape? Like the, the rock ape. You know what? Since I've lost, I don't care. I don't I don't even I don't care anymore. Uh, I'm just gonna go. The North America, United States of America, I couldn't tell you what state. Even if it is the United States. Are you sure you don't want to change your continent? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> All right, Matt, that was fully incorrect. Cool. <laughs> the rock ape is from Vietnam. Viet okay, interesting. Rock apes were so named because of their supposed propensity for throwing rocks, usually in retaliation, though after rocks were first thrown at them. They're also said to toss grenades hurled their way back at the throwers on occasion. Dang. <laughs> that's, that's pretty savage. All right. So your final score, Matt, after that question is only 11 points. Oh. Uh -huh. So even if even if we did it where you had to get half of them correct, you still lost. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Connor. Thank you so much. <laughs> Which means that you are still only at the level of the triple crown or triple clever winner. Yeah. I've gotten close, listeners. I've gotten close. For I I I just want to tell you, my mom was listening to the episode and she she doesn't even deserve a shout out for this. Somebody I know was listening to an episode and they were like they were like I was listening to the quiz and I was like getting all of the answers right in my head and I was like screaming at the at the car radio that she, they were listening to it in a car. I was screaming at it saying no, that's answer the other thing blah blah blah. I'm like that's okay. All right. All right, Miss Miss Smarty Pants, maybe you should come on the show and do a little clever girl quiz. Maybe. Uh, if your mom ever wants to come on the show, she's more than welcome <laughs> to. I'm fully and officially inviting you. Uh, you can fully come on. Um, Matt doesn't even have to be here. We can just do it, you and me. <laughs> um, you'll probably definitely be better at these quizzes because um, Matt <laughs> she, is not a clever boy. She will never know the pressure of sitting in this seat, having to on the spot go through like a thousand different possibilities of one answer. Like, no, she'll never know. She will never know. She totally can if she comes on the show, which I'm formally inviting her to do. <laughs> I'm sure when she listens to the episode, she'll probably bug me until she can come on the show. Well, uh, I'll figure it out, set it up with her, and we can yeah, try and I get mean, her on the show. I would love to have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> i mean just, we just, could to we see could do... you lose a quiz to your mom would be incredible <laughs> i mean essentially we, we could probably do like a head-to-head -head like we did similar to what we did with uh with trey um where you know we each have either the same or a similar question uh depending on the quiz um and we have to try and get more points i guess i don't know we'll, we'll figure it out we'll fine-tune the details for you listeners you heard it you heard it here first folks <laughs> matt's gonna lose to his mom live on the garlic boys <laughs> she is she is a product of nepotism is exactly what she is she doesn't deserve to be on this show <laughs> all right matt do you know what month it is it is well when this comes out it'll be december that's right. It's National Capitalism Month, everybody. Woo! Yay! I mean, it's Christmas month, everybody. 
Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Silver bells are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so for Christmas, um, I I just wanted to uh, do like a little, you know, getting into the Christmas spirit. I've been watching a couple Christmas movies here and there. Yeah. Um, and I was, uh, I thought of... Um, top 12 christmas kind of like the 12 days of christmas um top 12 christmas movies yes so we both have created our list of top 12 christmas <clears throat> movies and this is actually going to be our first month-long theme um this week as well as the next two weeks we are going to be doing our top 12 christmas theme um so this week we are movies um i believe next week we're going to do songs and then final week of the top 12 will be uh traditions mm. um yeah. and then uh hopefully we'll be able to have our christmas episode to celebrate with you all that'd be great yeah um so this week we're going over movies uh i have my list of 12 holiday movies oh i'm sorry yes we, we i should i should no say. no i only say that because technically one of mine isn't a christmas movie it's it's freaking die hard, isn't it? No, that is <laughs> full on a Christmas movie. No, no, needed. no, it is not. We, we can have that debate when we get there if it's on your list. Otherwise, we are not subjecting our listeners to this. I already had this debate with my coworkers today. <laughs> we are not doing How, how's it feel to be wrong about this debate? Um, it feels great, just as wrong as you I'm were right. about the clever boy quiz. I know that I'm right in this one, <laughs> and I will not be swayed by the likes of literally anybody. Yeah, you're not swayed. You're Matt. Got him. Uh, all right. So first off, I have my uh, my. Are we doing? Are we doing twelve to one? I we should because I don't want to start off too strong because okay. it's it's the best one. I think right. it's everybody's best one. Um, I. I will have some honorable mentions at the end, just that didn't make the list, but just a couple, not many. I won't go into deep, deep lore about all of them, but um, um, what's right. your number 12? Number 12, A Castle for Christmas. It's a pretty cheesy Hallmarky type movie, but it's got Carrie Elwes in it. Uh, and that's really the only reason it takes place okay. in Scotland. I mean, it's 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 I amazing. I can excuse a Hallmark movie being on your lips if it, on your list if Carrie Always is in it, um, because that's it, it's yeah. I I I do want to do one disclaimer. Okay. Besides number one, none of these are in any particular order. It's the way it's the order I thought of them in. That's not fair. I agonized <laughs> over my order. These are I, legitimately my top 12. I almost agonized over my order, but I wrote it in pen and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'd much rather be playing Pokemon right now. So like, <laughs> and also I don't really pick favorites. Like the number one is my favorite, but like, I'm really bad at picking favorites. Everybody really who knows me knows this. Let's go with your number 12. What is that? My number 12 is the nightmare before Christmas. Oh, okay. That's on my list. Just a lot higher up. Um, the reason it's not higher up is I think it's a dual movie. Right. It's a Halloween movie and a Christmas movie. Yeah. And so it counts as a Christmas movie. And out of all the Christmas movies there are, that's 12 is high up on that list. Oh, right. It's just that it's also, to me, it's more of a Halloween movie than it is a Christmas movie. So I count it lower. That's just fair. Yeah, that's that's completely fair. All right, number eleven. Go ahead with yours. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Uh, that's on your list, okay? I I never watched it as a kid, so like, there's no nostalgia in it for me. <laughs> so I watched it a lot as a kid, and I just love the idea of um, the one character doesn't want to be an elf; he wants to be a dentist. Yeah, yes, I do remember that. It's amazing. It's just like it's it's such a weird and like niche thing to be like you know what kids love 
dentists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That I I will agree. That is that is quite uh quite a funny aspect of that movie. My uh my number eleven, um again, no no particular order for me specifically, but Gremlins. Okay. I so love it, I love Gremlins. I watched it as a kid. Absolutely. So you'll you'll count Gremlins as a Christmas movie, but not Die Hard. Gremlins is is a Christmas movie. There's there's Christmas he was a Christmas gift. Oh, okay. And John McClane didn't stop the the terrorists from coming in during a Christmas the, party. The, the party. Uh, okay. First uh, of all, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the party uh, was also a celebration for a deal that they made. So it could have happened at any point during the year. Not it didn't have many, to just not be with that many Christmas high party. profile people in the room. Absolutely, it only, could have it been if it was a big deal. Christmas party. If it was a big deal that they were all involved in, they would have been there. They, okay, we need to move on. All You're right, wrong. what's your what's your number number 10? number ten? It's your turn to go first. Number okay, 10. Muppets Christmas Carol. I hate you so much. <laughs> Why? It's because that's not that should not be at number ten, man. No, no, no. Again, mine no. aren't in any order. It it's I thought of it a bit later when I was writing these down, and it just it made it to the list. It's number ten. However. I enjoy it a lot more than some of these other movies. That's not how a top 12 list works. Yeah, they just have to be anywhere within the top 12. That's that's how the that's how the list works. <laughs> no. <laughs> My number 10 is Home Alone. All right. All right, that's fair. That's fair. It's okay. I mean, it's it's fun. They should have stopped after the second movie. They should have stopped after the first one, honestly. I didn't even like I, the I don't one. I think the second one's good. Um the I watched the most recent one, and I'm what? rooting for the, <laughs> the bad guys. <laughs> They're not even technically bad guys. This little brat steals a toy from their house that they find out is worth a ton of money, and that if they had, they could sell <laughs> to keep their house. So they try to yeah. break in to get it back, and just he tortures them. Like they're trying to get their property back. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's not, I don't like that at all. <laughs> it's gone crazy. If you haven't watched the newest one, it's insane. Watch it. Yeah. I may not ever watch it. <laughs> all righty. Number nine. I think it's your turn. This is why I clarified holiday movie because okay. I have eight crazy nights. I don't think I've actually, I've actually seen that one. Let's, Who's in so there? it's an Adam Sandler movie. It's animated okay. and it's about Hanukkah. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't, it's been so long since I've seen it, but I remember it so clearly. Um, and like, I guess the main character like is sort of like an average kind of grumpy guy. Um, he meets this older guy um, like people have been putting him down his entire life, but he does so much for the community. Like referees basketball is such like a nice and genuinely good person, but like the entire community is sort of down on him because he has a weird voice clubbed for, foot. He's short and just like, just on his own, like down on, on, on his luck and everything with how he's being treated, but he's still so kind and positive towards everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's about him, um, Adam Sandler's character kind of helping the town see how great this guy is and how he should be. I think um, community member of the year or something like that. And it's truly a positive story, but it takes place over the eight nights of Hanukkah. Okay. I, I was misunderstanding, which is why if you were watching this, you saw me make a lot of weird faces. Um, yeah, I understand I, now it clicked in my head. Um, I thought you were talking about Adam Sandler uh, having the club foot and weird voice and all that no, no, stuff. No, no. Well, technically, I think he does voice that character too. Oh, but I, so it sounded very, very reminiscent of Hubie Halloween, <laughs> which is exactly that. Um, obviously. Oh, oh my gosh, Matt, you're right. Those are the <laughs> same movie. Just one takes place over over Halloween. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I still love the movie. I think it's yeah. incredible. Okay. Um, Person. number nine, Matt. Uh, my number nine is Jingle All the Way. 
Jingo, that's the Arnold Schwarzenegger. With Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. That's what he screams at the kid, right? Like just <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a bad movie. Like I there's so much in it that's just not good. But like I I used to love it as a kid. It was one of my favorites. Um, and it's like a nostalgia thing for me. Like I can't I, I can't get it out of my head. I love it every year. <laughs> Isn't the plot of it like he's just trying to get a toy for his son? He, he was supposed to get a toy earlier on, but he waited until the last minute, as everybody does. Um, and because everybody else waited until the last minute, he couldn't get this super high, high sought-after toy for his son, which his son really wanted. And then eventually, he becomes the superhero by accident, because he wandered into a studio, and he becomes the superhero, like, like in a suit on, like, the, the like for a commercial holiday for it, parade, or? like a parade. Oh yeah, like absolutely wild. Um, okay, it and he gets yeah. It it's a fantastic movie. It's so good. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, number eight. Uh, number eight. Uh, I just watched this today. Um, I put it on the list because I loved it so much, but I have no idea where it would actually fall on the list. Um, and it's also like 38 minutes. It's like 40 minutes long. So it's not even like a movie. It's the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. <laughs> I also watched that today. And I think <laughs> it was really good. Uh, I, I thought it was I, so funny. <laughs> every time Mantis opened her mouth, I get, I laughed. Like I know. <laughs> it was. That's... You took the two characters who understand Earth culture the least. Yeah, and say go trying to understand not only Christmas, but who Kevin Bacon is. <laughs> yeah, and I mean Kevin Bacon was was great in that as well. I I loved him in that. Um, it was good that I didn't see. I I have over the years. Um, I love Chris Pratt as Star Lord. I do not like Chris Pratt. <laughs> so over the years, I've just been like wanting to see him less and less and everything I see him in just like annoys me. Um, but regardless, uh, he wasn't in it much. <laughs> so I was not disappointed. Um, I liked it. I, I liked it. I liked it. I don't want to spoil too much since it came out like a couple days ago. So I, th I think they did really well with it. Um, the music, I think, was great as well. <gasps> Oh my like gosh, J I think James Gunn's use of music. Um, so he wrote a lot of the lyrics that are used in the music, especially with the big opening song. Mm. Um, but the band that is present is called the 97s, I believe. Yeah, I think or it the was old like that. 97s, something like that. Yep. Um, and they're fantastic in their performance. <laughs> I the the first song that plays in that's like 100% that's going to make my list for the top 12 songs. It was oh, so good. It's already in my uh, my rotation of uh Christmas songs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I I I almost created a Christmas playlist uh because I don't have one anymore. Um I almost created one just to put that song in it. It was so good. I'll send you my Christmas playlist. I would love that. Thank you. Already. Number 7. No, I didn't say my number eight. Okay. I'm bad at counting. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, specifically the Jim Carrey one. Your number seven? Yep. Like you or took eight. the time. Th your number eight. You took one, two, the time three, four, to go five. through these movies, and it's your number eight. Yeah. You're psychotic. I hate You're you. psychotic. <laughs> Do you have There's... reasoning, or are you just stupid? <laughs> First off, rude. <laughs> I'm Second sorry. off, if you let me speak. <laughs> the other movies that I have above it, I think, are they're all good. All the movies I have are good. There are just things that I like better about some of them. Okay. Um, that being said, there's probably going to be a little bit of controversy with what my next one is. It's freaking National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> okay. It's not. <laughs> all right. All right. That's fair. All right. Um, it, I. It, it's just very disappointing that it's that it's. It's not a eight. bad movie. It's. I great. know. It's just that's really low. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's the only one. Like, it's my top one. I'm just going to spoil that for the listeners That's now. your top one? That's my top one. And, like, okay. it's the only one that I actually have an order for because it is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Well, you put my favorite Christmas movie at number 10, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Okay, again, it's but not... We'll get, we'll get into that argument later. It's essentially um, the order I found them in. Like, I'm like, oh, I love that movie, so I put it on the list. But that's just... it's The order I found them in <laughs> was the order of my list. Hey, the, the, the Grinch is my number eight. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. My number seven, though, is the Polar Express. Oh, why? Why is that your number seven? We just talked about how like terrified the Uncanny Valley is, and that is the entire movie. I live off of how un- uncanny and terrifying that movie <laughs> is. Especially I... that one kid that's like, they, they, they punched something no. different in my ticket. I hate that kid <laughs> so much. I cannot tell you how much I despise that kid the first time I watched it. I used to love the movie. And then just like over the years, like I'm realizing like who, who animated this? Like, Who thought that this was a good idea to make like borderline somewhat realistic characters, but then just like twist something about them. Just like twist just a little bit to make them freaking terrifying. It was CGI mocap. Um, it was it was early in like when they were starting to use those and they didn't know how to make it not terrifying <laughs> yet. <laughs> it was it's a good story, I will say. Like it part of me struggles getting over some of the some of the stuff in it, but it is a good it is a good story, I'll give you that. My favorite part is when they dr- uh they drift a train on uh, a lake of ice. It's a pretty cool part, yeah. <laughs> Um, I always liked the man on top of the train. He, the scenes where he was in it were kind of some of my favorite. I also really liked the... I don't love kids when they sing, um, but the one with the northern lights and everything and that one kid was singing, it really moved me, you know? Uh, I also got to perform the Hot Chocolate song in show choir in high school. Oh, nice. And so... Hot, hot, hey, we got it. Hot, hot, oh, we got it. Number seven. Hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, my number seven was It's a Wonderful Life. I listen, it it's something we watched like so like we always had to wait until the day after Thanksgiving to watch the movie because it's a Christmas movie. Because blah, blah, blah. the Christmas season doesn't start until Black Friday. Exactly. Exactly. Until capitalism. Um I mean Black Friday. So right. So we we would always try and watch it, you know, the day after Thanksgiving, um, just to, you know, usher in the the holiday spirit. Um, and it was just like it's kind of like a memories thing, I guess a nostalgia thing. It's not I it's it's for me now, it's really hard to watch or play like any old things, like old movies, old video games and stuff. I, I have a really hard time sitting there and like being interested, but like that's one of those things that I always kind of came back to i respect that there's like tradition and like um meaning behind it i just can't sit through it it's too it's too long yeah it's fair um my number six yes my number six is the family man with nicholas cage (laughs) i had to put it on there i I like I I watched it years ago and it's not even that great. Like I did not like it that much, but like I also love Nicolas Cage and I was just like it, I kind of have to. Although the one I should have left it as an honorable mention if I'm being 100% honest because I put a Ryan Reynolds one in the honorable mention section. So I should have put it in there, but I did. So too late. I've never seen The Family Man. It's, I have no it's, clue what it is. It's not like earth shattering but it's it's a decent early 2000s movie uh for my number six spot i have the santa claus three number three okay yeah that's a good one uh saved fully by martin short yep absolutely (laughs) it's peak martin short performance if if you want to know who martin short is as a person just watch uh that he is um zany outlandish over the top 
I don't know Martin Short, but this is just what I've seen in interviews and everything. And just he plays the character of Jack Frost to a T. Mm -hmm. um, All right, what's your number five? Number five. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. You're kidding me. You nope. can't watch It's a Wonderful Life, but you can watch Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Yes, because there is a whole three or four good songs in that movie. Oh my gosh. I hate that movie so it's much. It's so good. <laughs> this okay. is one I used to watch as a kid, which is like yeah. why I can watch it now. Uh, and I also just like, oh no, I hit, I hit this woman with my sleigh. Better kidnapper. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a wild movie. Uh, not gonna lie. Um, my number five was Christmas with the Cranks. It's always I. It's another Tim Allen. Uh, the other lady that I can't remember her name. It's from Tim the... Allen in. Um... She plays in Freaky Friday. She also plays in the the horror movie with. Not Jane Lynch. Um, the other tall lady with short hair in Hollywood. <laughs> I know her name. Like I, I do. It just I'm, I'm not. I, I know exactly who you mean. In um, oh my goodness, she's in Trading Places. She's in Knives Out. Like yeah. she's in a lot. I know her. I know who she is. It's she just, was on NCIS for a little while. My my brain is not wanting to work tonight. I know oh. exactly what you're talking about. Um, and also, uh, Dan Aykroyd was in that movie, right? Yep, 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 yep. It's it's just a good good movie all around. My parents. Jamie Lee me. Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. All right. Yeah. I knew it started with a J. Yeah, Jane sounded so right, and I was like, no, it's not Jane though. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, good movie. I love the tanning scene. I can't stop laughing at that scene. I. Have you seen it in a while? I think it's been two years since I've seen but it. Basically, he uh, Tim Allen is in the tan or the spray tan machine, mm -hmm. um, and he he's told to count to five, so he counts to five, and it sprays him. So then he turns around, he counts to five, but it doesn't it doesn't go off. So he turns around and it sprays him on the front again. So then he turns around again to try and get the back, and it sprays him again. It's it's absolutely hilarious. Or is that Are, no, that's that friends. might be friends? That's that's no. Ross and friends. That is Ross and Friends, but th it happens in the cranks too. They go tanning. I totally mix those up. It is Friends, but it's also <laughs> in Christmas with the cranks. I, I will stand by this. They go tanning, and it's a really awkward situation because they're in like minimal clothing, and the pastor walks in. Like I think before they go tanning, and it's hilarious. But I did mix those up. I will say I am wrong. It's a hilarious scene from Ross or from Friends from Ross. Yeah. From Ross. friends, what's your what's your? Did we already say your number five? Yeah. So what's your number four? My number four is the Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. Um, I've always loved it. I love the Tim Burton. I love stop motion. Like, that's always been just really high on my list. Something I I try to watch every year. I haven't watched it in a while, but it is on my list all the time. It's a good movie. Like I said earlier, it's a good movie. I just think of it more of a Halloween movie. Yeah. Especially because the main antagonist is Oogie Boogie. Very true. Or as I call them, Buddy. the sentient sack of bugs. <laughs> what's, what's your number four? My number four is uh, the sentient sack of bugs movie. The se <laughs> sentient sack of bugs movie? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's actually the sentient ball of snow movie, Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. All right. I don't. Well, you have so many cartoons on your list, and I don't watch those ever. Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> Is cinematic classic dude. now. Now Jack Frost with uh with what's his face um, Michael um, Keaton. Michael Keaton, phenomenal. I would watch Great. that, but that's Frosty a good honorable Snowman. mention. Frosty the Snowman was one I watched as a kid. I had a yeah. VHS tape of it. Um, it just was always funny, uh, just entertaining. Um, I didn't like Frosty Returns as much, but you can't mm. you can't improve. See on perfection. That's that why. sounds like that sounds like a horror movie. If I'm being 100 percent honest, I can see why it didn't do too well. It's Frosty Returns sounds like yes. a horror movie. Yes. No, it's just he comes back and he's like no, a, a, I, a snowman again. I I get the premise, but it sounds like a horror Here's movie. Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, what's your number three? My number three is the first Santa Claus movie. All right. All right. The original 1994 peak Tim Allen. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, it was so funny. So many unanswered questions. So many things that are like, wait, what? <laughs> and um, it's just also a fun premise. Um, like I imagine people with dads were always thinking like, Oh, what if my dad was Santa Claus? Um, and so like just being able to live out like the experience of seeing your dad do something awesome and being, <laughs> being proud to have him as your dad was something I really connected with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, what's no, funny? No, that, I, what's funny? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's funny. This is. It's such a. It's. It's a good movie. It's a funny movie, which is why it's higher up on the list for me. But uh, <laughs> my my number three is Home Alone. Number one, just because I love Home Alone. Um, I understand. It, I love Home Alone. I think it's hilarious. Uh, it's a little, maybe a little outdated as as far as being like okay for children like it was back then no uh, was no I, I i have a question you come from a large family right uh-huh um you're also the youngest uh-huh uh, did you ever get forgotten <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> that from... laugh says yes dude <laughs> so my parents uh i don't I don't remember a lot. I really don't. Um, but I, I got I've lost heard... so many times. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> I have heard stories over the years. Uh, my parents, I mean, my parents have so many kids to keep track of. And at, not only that, but like my parents also ran a, like a foster home type thing yeah. uh, before I was born. So they had even more kids. Um, some of them were the kids we adopted, which is why we have such a big family. But to, to make a long story short, uh, my sister was left on a piano one time, uh, like in a little uh, like carrier car seat kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I I'm almost positive I've been left places. I remember being lost in in like a Kmart or something before. Like you ever get lost in New York? No, no, I <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, and I never got it, left home. Get it like the the title of Home Alone Two. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Where Donald Trump oh man, Donald Trump's in that movie. I forgot. <laughs> um yeah, it's it's number three. I, I there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities to my family, but my family's <laughs> not my family's not as toxic, uh, for sure. Um we do get quite loud though. Like the singing in the shower scene, mm -hmm. that happens. That definitely happens. <laughs> awesome. Mostly me. It's 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 mostly me, <laughs> but it does happen. <laughs> All right, Matt. What is your number two? My number two is the Santa Claus. Number one. Okay. I I love that movie. I love Bernard in that movie. He's just he was always one of my favorite characters. Just he's so so sassy. It's so he's sarcastic. The sassiest. <laughs> he's absolutely amazing. I had a little bit of a kid crush on. Um, I don't think it was the first one, right? It was the second one where he had to find a wife. Yes. So in the second one, I, I know this is kind of branching off the first one, but I did have a little crush on, uh, Carol, the principal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that was the, subtle. Her name was Carol. <laughs> the, the first one holds a lot in my, like the, the point where the point where he goes, uh, like shakes his belly. Does this look like a little weight to you? I do that all the time. Like the, <laughs> I when I he's sitting that. at the park and the little company comes over, he's like, "Well, what do you want?" <laughs> like just everything about that movie. Um, the 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 visual effects they use to like show him get like the, the oh, facial he hair and in stuff. The mirror and everything. Oh, yes, yeah. it, it's just it's 1994, but it's amazing. I love it so much. The scene where he does that, but he like goes and sits down at the table with all the businessmen, and he's just like eating in front of them. He's like, "Oh, you can go on," and just like shoveling pudding into his mouth. It's amazing. It is. Oh, it is. Sure. We've lost a lot of comedic talent <laughs> in in the last couple of years, but yeah, good, good movie. 
my number two, and I'm so I'm so shocked this wasn't on your list at all. Elf. I hate Elf. I'm sorry. I I used to love Elf, um, but then my sister would sit there and watch it quite literally every day. I can't stand it anymore. Like if it's on, I will literally leave the room. That's disappointing because it's what made Will Ferrell Will Ferrell. I honestly I'm... like like the the movie star that he is. I think it's because of that movie. Um, I mean, he had Saturday Night Live and everything, but like he was still relatively unknown when that came out. It was directed by John Favreau. Yep. Um, it starred. Um, oh, what was her? So many good people, like actors um, and actresses, Deschanel. Zoe Deschanel, um, yep. Alan. I he just passed away a little bit ago. Though. Yeah, like Santa was played by a, someone. Um, I don't want to say Alan Alden, but that's wrong. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember. Bob but... Hope was Papa Elf. Like, just you and I even still quote like every time you're leaving, I go bye, buddy. Oh, it, like, don't get me wrong. It's a it, good movie. It's a quotable movie. It's just it can't be on my list. I've seen it too much. <laughs> I made my way through the candy cane forests stretched across the gumbop seas and walked through the Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, it's a good movie. I just can't have it on my list. <laughs> it's disappointing that you're uh, dumb, but that's where we are. <laughs> okay. Um, What's your number one? <laughs> my number one, of course is the cinematic masterpiece, the magnum opus, <laughs> and the last movie that Jim Henson worked on before he passed away, The Muppet's Christmas Carol. Phenomenal movie. It, 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 if I had ordered my list, it would be much higher. It's so it's, good. It's the best thing for Christmas. Um, it, the, the, the songs, bangers. Mm. Um, One More Sleep Till Christmas marley and marley the sad one uh that the, the little girl sings uh the the season of your heart from the 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 ghost of christmas present um the reprise at the end michael kane as scrooge <laughs> yep it's it's phenomenal it's yeah. such a good movie it's it's amazing um, you, you can never go wrong with the, the, the zaniness. I feel like is the best word to use for Muppets, um, in like, a what's supposed to be a serious, like lesson learning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, kind of situation. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it so much. Uh, it's just, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely something I need to it, appreciate it's, more. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm serious though. Like, I I don't watch it enough. Like, I, I, I don't. I don't watch it every year, but it needs to be on my list for every year because I forget how good it is. Oh yeah, it it it's great. I I can't speak it highly enough about it. <laughs> uh, which is where I'm going with the Grinch. <laughs> Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um, I quote that on the daily, the it, daily. I'm not saying you're not wrong. I'm just saying there's better choices. No, I, it, in my opinion, Jim Carrey is stunning in that movie. Just like for in sure. every way. For it's sure. Amazing. I would pick the Grinch over. I, I would, I would pick the Grinch year round. If, if I had, if I had movies put in front of me, I would still watch the Grinch because the Grinch just, I don't know. It's it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Who who's should not be in live action? They just shouldn't. They look insanely terrible. Oh, you, you want to talk about the who's not being? Uh, it shouldn't exist. The baby Grinch. <laughs> the that baby. is a colossal nightmare. <laughs> and yet it's, right. it's it looks great. Like it looks very yeah. well done. It just is cursed. Yeah, no, no, you're not wrong. Um, I and I definitely agree with like the quoting and everything. Like you said, like I I will I will constantly like weekly in my head go six o'clock dinner with my shelf. I yeah, can't cancel that again. <laughs> I I can't tell you how many times I like 
formulate uh like a schedule for myself and then like do it in that voice <laughs> wallow in self pity i'm booked <laughs> and yeah i think my favorite part of that movie though is um when he does when he rips the tablecloth off of the table <laughs> everything was supposed to fall off yeah, but he did but he did it so well that everything stayed on the table. So improvised, he just comes over and goes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's amazing. <laughs> like he's just, oh my gosh, he's it's he's just so perfect in that movie. He's perfect for that movie, and that movie did it. Like the movie itself didn't deserve him, but yeah. like it is all the better for him. <laughs> That's why it's number one for me. So you hear you heard it here, folks. Uh, the number one movies to watch for the Christmas season are the uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um, let us know what your favorite Christmas movies are and what Christmas movies we should check out. And you can do that on our social media. <laughs> exactly. You can follow us on Twitter at the Garlic Boys. On Instagram at the Garlic Boys, uh, <laughs> on TikTok at the Garlic Boys. <laughs> you can even support us on Patreon at, at the, the Garlic, Garlic Boys. Boys. <laughs> if you'd love to watch video versions of our episodes, you can watch on YouTube.com. We are at the Garlic Boys. <laughs> um, when this goes out, we should have four videos live on there. Um, so please head on over there, check those out. Um, you'll get to see our costumes because our Halloween episode is going up. So you'll get to see me as a pineapple, uh, Trey as Tina, and Matt slightly take off a P physics costume throughout the entire episode. <laughs> um, we'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, please keep coming back. Please keep sharing with your friends. Thank you all so much for listening again. Um, we're glad that you're spending this Christmas season with us. Uh, I guess the last thing to say is remember to always stay, stay garlicky. garlicky.